I received boards from JLC PCB for my next project. Let's take a look. We have a ruler with a built-in magnifier film. And although there's not going to be much magnification, it actually does magnify a little bit. It's probably more obvious in person. And the boards are vacuum packed, so let's see how they turned out. I like how it came out. All the drills look good. All the silk screen came out nice and sharp. So what is this board all about? Earlier this year when I was playing around with DigiSpark boards that have an AT Tiny 85 on it, I ended up making a few of them unresponsive because I messed up the internal fuse settings so it wasn't able to take a program anymore. I needed to make a high voltage fuse programmer which can do AT tiny devices, including on a DigiSpark board or a standalone chip like this AT tiny 13. And I found there were several projects using an Arduino as a high voltage programmer. So I came up with my own solution. This will accept an Arduino Pro Micro here to control the board. It has a zip socket to put a bare chip to program, or you can put in wires and bring it over to a DigiSpark board externally. Then there's a 12 volt boost switcher that will take 5 volts from Arduino, turn it into 12 volts used for high voltage programming, and some other control circuitry for applying power and reset signals to the target device. I also have this optional 6 pin in circuit serial programming header for future experiments where I may want to turn the Pro Micro into a regular Atmel programmer, not just a high voltage programmer. So let's take a look at the schematic design for this, look at a couple of data sheets, assemble a board, and try it out. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Five PCBs for only two dollars plus shipping, up to 100 by 100 millimeters. And for the same price you can choose any of these colors for the solder mask. Go check them out at jlcpcb.com. This project is a PCB design based on a breadboarded prototype from earlier this year to do high voltage fuse programming on AT Tiny 85s, and it will work on other AT Tiny series components as well. So I had an Arduino Uno high voltage fuse programmer, and the real problem I had was AT Tiny 85 fuses on board for a DigiSpark board. So they are in circuit, not just an individual chip to program. Here's the final circuit I came up with, even though I now see there's a few things I would have changed, both on the schematic as well as in the footprint size of chosen parts. So we'll go through that while I assemble one of these boards, and we'll look at the different sections of the circuit, what I learned from doing this, and what I would do differently. And as I commented in my original project sketches, I adapted all of this from Ralph Bacon's version of this fuse resetter. And this has been floating around for a while, so there's other projects that everyone's basically inspired by. The main problem we're trying to solve with this high voltage programmer, if you accidentally set some of the fuses that configure how the device operates, like if you disable the ability to self-program, or you disable the reset mode on one of your pins so you can't put the chip in reset, you disable the ability to serial program and data download, you basically could brick your device. If we do that, the only way out is with high voltage serial programming, in which case you need between 11.5 to 12.5 volts, as well as regular 5 volt VCC, to program the chip and access the fuses. So that's what these Arduino sketches do. They let you program in certain fuses by controlling a 12 volt programming voltage as well as the target VCC on the chip you're programming and it will communicate with the chip and set up the fuses and you can unbrick your device. I used EasyEDA for the schematic and the board layout so I placed my components in the schematic and wired them up and then when I was done I chose convert to PCB or along the way if I made changes to any circuits, I updated PCB and that created the board layout which ended up looking like this. On the left side we have our target programming headers and configurations. 
All of this is controlled with GPIO from an Arduino Pro Micro, the 5 volt version. And I put header sockets here so I can just plug the Arduino in when I need to. Otherwise, it's not committed to this programmer project and I can just unplug it and use it for something else later. To program the target ATtiny device, I have a ZIF socket and the smallest I can find. I don't know if they make them smaller, but I could only find 14 pins. So I'm using this socket as if it were just an 8 pin. And I've connected up the programming pins from the Arduino to the ZIF socket, the reset voltage, and the target VCC voltage, which are controlled on the other side of the schematic. For future considerations, since Arduino can also program Atmel AVR devices as if it were an ISP programmer, I also connected up the programming pins to this 6-pin in-circuit serial programming header. So later I can experiment with just using this board not just as an AT tiny high voltage programmer, but just as an in-circuit programmer for other Atmel devices. It's yet to be tested. And if I'm doing this, I need to be able to not just use high voltage reset 12 volts, I need to be able to just give VCC as a reset 5 volts. So what I've done here, instead of connecting my 12 volt programming reset directly, I just made a net called N reset on both of these target headers, and N reset can be jumpered between the 12 volt reset or D10 coming from the Arduino, which is just a GPIO VCC. So for now, my jumper is going to go between 12 volts and this N reset to the target devices. With this section of the schematic connecting up the programming control pins from Arduino to the target, the rest of the circuit really just generates 12 volts over here with this boost converter, switches the 12 volts over to the reset pin when the Arduino wants it to, otherwise it's pulled low, and the Arduino can also control VCC to the target device by turning on V target through this FET. The circuitry on board runs from VCC taken from the Arduino 5 volts, and the first thing I wanted to do was put a PTC resettable fuse here, because if something goes wrong on this board, I want this fuse to trip and not destroy anything over here by trying to draw excessive current, and yet I want to be able to just take away power from the board and then this fuse will reset when it cools down. So I'm bringing in VCC from Arduino. I have a VCC power LED here, so I know when I've got power to the board. I have some decoupling capacitors and bulk capacitance throughout the board. They're just arbitrarily laid here. I can use them or not as needed. I also have an LED optional for programming or error indication that are controlled from the Arduino. This boost converter takes VCC from the Arduino and boosts it up to about 12 volts. I'm using the AP3012 in a standard boost configuration. So here's the equation for setting the output voltage with these two resistors. Using my component values, the calculated output would have been 12.08 volts. I measured about 12.35, which is around 2% difference. Although 12.35 volts is getting close to this 12.5, so I was trying to calculate toward the center of this range. Then I have a power LED to show when 12 volts is present. And from there, when the programmer wants to apply 12 volts high voltage to the reset pin, it can turn on this transistor, which pulls the base of this PNP transistor toward ground turning this transistor on and passing this 12 volts to this net right here. I had to use one transistor to turn on the other because this being 12 volts, I can't have this directly going to a 5 volt Arduino. So this way I'm just working between 5 volts and ground, and the transistor handles between 12 volts and ground. When 12 volts is not being presented to the reset pin, I wanted it to be held low, and I had to choose a resistor that would be a compromise between having proper power dissipation with 12 volts across it, and at the same time, the reset pin on the AT Tiny has an internal pull-up. For the Tiny 85, it's between 30 and 60K, so when this transistor is not on, if this is being pulled up internally to 5 volts, I need to make sure when I'm trying to pull it low, the voltage divider between 30 to 60K and 2.52K 
still gives me a valid low. Down here to provide target voltage, 5 volts, to turn on the chip that we are programming, we need to be able to turn it on and off. So I did that with this P-channel FET. This P-FET will turn on when we bring the gate low, but I want it to have active high logic to turn it on, so I'm turning on an NPN, which brings it low. I think I was doing this to maintain software without having to change different versions from something I had previously. If I were starting from scratch, maybe I would just do this a little differently. But either way, the Arduino can turn on 5 volts to the chip we are programming, or turn it off. The P-channel FET I ended up choosing for the VCC target power. It's intended to be a logic level gate control. So if I pull the gate high to 5 volts, bringing it toward ground should be within the safe operating range. The gate threshold voltage, minus 1.5 volts. And this is just roughed in for now. I threw a voltage divider on this target voltage and I'm bringing it to an analog input over on the Arduino so I can monitor the target voltage. And this comes from using DigiSpark as an example. When I just had a chip in a socket and I give it target VCC 5 volts, it comes on almost immediately. But when I'm programming a chip on DigiSpark and it's got its own bulk capacitance, I give it 5 volts and it slowly charges up the capacitors and this chip doesn't see VCC for a while. So if I monitor VCC right here, my sketch can wait until it actually knows the chip is powered up, then continue with the programming operation. And that's essentially the circuit. In retrospect, I don't remember why I decided to use 0402 for all of these resistors and some capacitors. And I think I made a mistake when I chose which part for these NPN and PNPs. The package is SOT523, which is small. In my head, I was thinking I chose SOT23, which is the same as this FET, and that is a lot easier to solder to, as I noticed. I was able to do this FET immediately. These NPN and PNPs, that took me forever because the iron tip, and I tried every single tip I had, I was literally swapping 10 different iron tips right down to fine needle points, trying to figure out how can I make contact with the pad and the pin, and it was just not working out. So this thing took me like two days to assemble. I kept making mistakes, I kept having to check continuity between the actual pin on the part and the pad on the part, and a lot of times it wasn't making contact, I just had to do trial and error to get through it. So I'm definitely not going to use any parts this small if I'm hand soldering. Over on the PCB layout, I was trying to measure the distance between parts and how far I needed to place things so that if I plug an Arduino in here, this connector is not going to actually be accidentally in the way of an overhanging PCB. And for this ZIF socket, I wanted to make sure it's not conflicting with the Arduino. I wanted to make sure I placed any circuitry far enough away from these things that it won't conflict mechanically, including this three pin header. So I barely got this squeezed in so that when the ZIF socket is here and I put the lever down, it goes beside this header and it goes right up to this reset jumper. And right here, the silk screen markings, I wanted to show where pin one and pin eight of my target device are. And I wanted to make sure they're far enough away that the ZIF socket itself doesn't cover them. And even though there's a lot of wasted space over here, Maybe I could have placed some of these components over here. I did at least make use of space under the Arduino here. And this board was not originally this size and shape. Originally, this was actually going to be a built-in circuit for an Arduino Pro Micro. And this was just going to be a long skinny board that I could throw on a breadboard and wire up. There was no zip socket intended. But then I kept changing my mind, so I just decided I'm going to put an Arduino socket here. And in order to help aligning the Arduino Pro Micro and reminding myself what actually goes here, I wrote Arduino Pro Micro here. I wrote that this is the raw pin and I wrote USB here because this is the side of the board where the USB connector is. So hopefully I never plug it in backwards. I've got a DigiSpark plugged in with all the required pins over to the programming pins on the zip socket. The sketch 
is detecting device signature 930B, which is correct for ATtiny85, and it's reading the fuses when I power up, E15DFE, which is the default I have here for Digispark fuses. If we enter that into this fuse calculator website, it will tell us external reset pin is disabled, so it's a GPIO. And if I want to actually enable this as a reset pin, this is what the fuses would look like to have the same configuration as before, just now with that P5 pin as a reset, E1DDFE. So if I come over to the programmer and choose menu option 2 to enable the reset on pin P5 and then run this, now the fuses have been written and the change was this high fuse went from 5D to DD. So E1DDFE, which is what this website told us it should be for re-enabling reset on pin P5. So it looks like the programmer is able to program and read the fuses correctly. Let's just read them again using command 0 to read fuses and it's still E1DDFE. Now let's try an ATtiny13. So I will take the Digispark pins out. I have an ATtiny13, so I'll put that in the programmer socket. Now I will read fuses again and double check what signature it reads. So this time it read signature 9007, which is ATtiny13, and it read the fuses 6A and FF. There's no extended fuse on the Tiny13. Option 4 to disable reset on pin P5. So it did that, and now the fuses have changed from 6AFF to 6AFE. I'll read it again to be sure. 6AFE. Now option 3 to change back to defaults, and it's back to 6AFF. I'll read it again. 6AFF. So this system seems to be working, both the sketch and the hardware. Well, I'm really happy with how this project turned out, and it's still not even done yet. I still need to improve the sketch and get this other in-circuit serial programming header working, but for now I'm considering this a success. Thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this project. It was very easy to order boards once I had my Gerber files ready, and with courier shipping they got here in no time at all. If you liked this project, give it a thumbs up. And if you know someone who may be interested in this type of content, feel free to share. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for future updates. Hopefully lots more projects coming soon. See you on the next one.